Welcome to the J-Boy Show, hosted by Jake Crane, the fastest growing sports show in the nation. I'm Coach Hugh Freeze. This is Super Bowl champion Brandon Graham. Hey, this is DJ Shockley, and you're watching. And you're watching. And thanks for watching the J-Boy Show. All right, hop on in here, everybody. Got another great one today. Appreciate you joining us uh, and spreading the word. Keep telling your friends if you like SEC coverage. And again, remember, it's only June. We got July, then August, and September's here, baby. We're going to be kicking it off. Uh, excited to get to my monologue and welcome Brian Stoltz from the Auburn Wire from USA Today and the FWAA as well. We're going to be talking Auburn, going to be talking some SEC East, uh, SEC West. He's got some predictions that are going to uh, surprise you, including he doesn't think Tank Bigsby is the best running back in the SEC. We'll let you know who he does. But first, uh, got to give a shout out to our friends at betonline.ag. Head over there today. The online casino is always open, always open. Uh, you don't have to worry about being cold or getting your drinks taken late because, again, it's Bet Online. Dot ag so you can pour your own drinks and set your own temperature in your house which is great fall asleep whenever you want uh it's short, you can play the sharp sign up bonuses are great like i said you got major league baseball nba playoffs anything you want to bet on they're going to have the sharps that's betonline.ag head over there today uh and my monologue today is is about expectations uh for this season for a couple teams uh i want to start number one uh with kentucky and this is a team that i've talked about uh, a lot on here. And if you look at the schedule and, and I put out my, you know, preseason predictions, I had Kentucky uh, at number two and some people freaked out and some people uh, didn't. And, and we've talked about it a lot on this show. And, and look, I, I understand that Florida has really good players. I get that. All right. Uh, I do understand that Florida lost a lot of really good players. Kyle Pitts, Kadarius Tony, you know, you Kyle Trask, you don't just replace those guys. I, I, and when you look at Kentucky's roster, the way they're built on the offensive and defensive line. Now adding a passing element. A guy like Bo Allen, that even if he just gives you a little bit in the passing game, is going to give you a lot more than what you've had. Defenses are going to have to play Kentucky a lot more honest. And then you look at the way that Mark Suits has recruited and developed that roster. From the outside in, they return Josh Ali. They return Chris Rodriguez at running back. They return some guys that understand on defense too. And they play their ass off. And they're physical, and they're not afraid anymore. Kentucky is not afraid. They're not afraid to play anybody at any place at any time. And I look at Florida. Ton of pressure on defense. Got to play Bama early. If Florida does not start out well, there is going to be a lot of problems in Gainesville, uh, especially if the defense doesn't play good. They give up 45 to Bryce Young and Bama, something, something like that. At home, Todd Grantham is going to be gone. I'm telling you right now, he's going to be gone. And you're going to have a D.C. that's gone halfway through the season, uh, which is going to cause problems, going to have negative momentum. And there's Kentucky just plodding along, plodding along, plodding along. So my expectation for Kentucky outside of Georgia is to be the second best team in the East. And hell, Missouri may be third. The, the, the witch of Columbia, Eli Drinkwitz, the Eli Drinkwitch, just made that up on the fly, uh, this guy's got something going out there. Connor Basilak is a very good player. Now, they've got to fix the middle of that defense. The middle of Missouri's defense is a question mark right now. They've got some answers at other places, uh, but replacing Nick Bolton, who's one of, the, one of the most underrated defensive players in the country last year, if you turn on the film, uh, was making plays left and right in the box, he's gone. You lost a couple other guys. So, so they got to shore up the middle of that defense. Uh, we'll see how that looks. But I think Kentucky is going to be the, the team that finishes second in the East. And you look at the West. Uh, you look at expectations of new coaches. We know what the expectation of Alabama is. But you look at a place like Auburn, Brian Harson, in this first year. Got a lot of guys from the portal. That's great. The roster's still not where you want it. How's the offensive line going to be? You've got two easier opponents in the first two games. Then you go up to Happy Valley to see the, the guys from Penn State coming off a bad year. Should be nuts. Probably going to be full capacity. You know, the Big Ten is what it is, but probably going to be full capacity. That's going to be a huge game. That's I asked Brian Stoltz about that game. We go in depth. Then you go to LSU. You go from Happy Valley to Death Valley. It's a heck of a turnaround. I'll give you a hint. It's tough to win in both of them. There's been a lot of people that left Happy Valley sad. There's been a lot of people that left Death Valley dead. And then you get Georgia at home. So, to me, 
you always want to aim high. You want to win every game that, that that you play, that you coach, whatever. But if Auburn wins eight games this year with the roster that they have, that's a heck of an accomplishment. I know some Auburn fans that like, oh, this, oh, it's Auburn, this, that, and the other. There's a lot more stuff that goes into it. A lot more stuff that goes into it. And when you're looking at the expectations this first year, you look at Tennessee, the roster that that left, the mass exodus, lose Henry Toa Toa, guys like that. Questions at quarterback. Uh, I don't see Tennessee really doing anything at all this year. That offense may hang around in some games because it's new. Uh, it's at a different pace. They may take the lead on some teams early, and you're like, oh, my gosh, what's Tennessee doing? Then you'll see it kind of fall away late because that's how that operation works when you operate at that pace with that roster. Vandy is going to be what it is. Uh, that's a massive rebuilding project. Uh, it's going to take a ton of time. I like Clark Lee. Uh, we're going to see. I know a lot of people are excited about that hire at Vanderbilt, uh, but that's going to take a ton of time. And then South Carolina. I know you got Kevin Harris. Marshawn Lloyd coming off an ACL injury. You're still hearing great things about him. Guy that I was really high on last year. Talked about him before the season last year. But outside of that, you really don't have anything. I mean, you, we talk about roster rebuilds. I mean, you you take the guys on defense. We know J.C. Horn, those guys off the team. You take away Shy Smith. There's not a whole hell of a lot on the outside. So while I love the Shane Beamer hire and I and and I think he's gonna do well, I think he's gonna recruit well, my expectations for them are, are pretty low. Uh so looking at the new hires, highest expectations on Auburn, and that's to win eight games, in my opinion. And that'll be a heck of an accomplishment. I do want to tell you about one of our new sponsors, though. Moink Box. You need to go to moinkbox.com right now. Uh, they were on Shark Tank. Uh, Kevin O'Leary said it's the best bacon he's ever tasted, and I promise you it's the truth. Uh, they sent us some, a whole big package. They've got all type of stuff, uh, and 80% of all the meat is made by a few certain companies. And why is that? Because the big guy always crushes the little guy. But you can help change that. If you go to moinkbox.com slash believe right now, Let, literally, I, I'm going to read this. This is a true ad read right here my friends it says join the moink movement today go to go to moink that's m-o-i-n-k go to moinkbox.com slash believe that's moinkbox.com slash b-l-e-a-v right now and listeners of this show get free bacon for a year with every box order i'm gonna read that one more time this is not false advertising Join the Moink movement today. Go to moinkbox.com slash believe, B-L-E-A-V, right now. And listeners to this show get free bacon for a year with every box order. That's one year of the best bacon you'll ever taste, but it's only for a limited time. It's spelled M-O-I-N-K box.com slash believe. That's moinkbox.com slash believe. Free bacon. What a great gift. Any type of year. Jan January, March, July. October into December, bacon is always good. It's always good. Uh, unless you're my girlfriend and, and you're a pescatarian, but that's all right. I'll slip some bacon and fish and not tell her. That's a joke. But anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys. Let's get to the interview. Brian Stoll has got some great stuff. All right, everybody. As usual, now it's time for the interview portion of today's show. Uh, excited to bring on a guy. We're going to talk a little specific Auburn here. Uh, I know a big portion of our audience is excited about that. The managing editor of the Auburn Wire, uh, uh, members of USA Today, and a member of the FWAA, Mr. Brian Stoltz. Brian, what's up, man? Hey, how are you? How's it going? Doing good, man. I appreciate you joining us. Absolutely. Anytime. Uh, definitely. Well, off the bat, I'm just going to ask you, and you know we're kind of zoning in on Auburn here, uh, your thoughts on Brian Harson and how he's doing so far and what's been an early recruiting process, but, uh, you know, attack the portal, especially DB heavy. Yeah, I think uh, the way he's brought in some uh, defensive backs has been great. I, I still think they need to add some offensive line, of course, and maybe guys along the defensive line. But all I've heard is that he's brought some energy that was kind of lacking in uh, the uh, department at football program and in the football program. And uh, that, you know, some of the guys that he got rid of, uh, might have been a good thing uh, that kind of left and, you know, he kind of got rid of some loose change. And, you know, he, he, I think with any new hire, there's a new assignment, new era, you know, new expectations, new, just brand, everything is brand new. And, you know, it kind of brings like a new atmosphere and things like that. And, you know, I'm excited about the Hearts and Era. I think, uh, you know, this year is going to be sort of different because, you know, 
new era. I mean, a new coach and a new offense and, you know, kind of learning everything. And the defense is going to have to keep Auburn in some games, I think, um, as far as the offense uh, goes. And, you know, with a brutal schedule like Auburn faces this year, you know, expectations should be low. Uh, but, um, you know, you never know. I mean, expectations <laughs> were really low for the Malzahn first year. So, uh, and that turned out pretty well. So, we'll see. We'll see uh, how it goes. And but so far, I'm, I'm liking what I'm hearing and from what I'm seeing from Harson. And, you know, uh, I think it's, it's a good change right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, to quote another coach uh, from in the same state, it's it's part of a process. Uh, it really is yes. when you take over a program and a roster that's kind of in the state Auburn's is. And, and not saying it's barren. There's there's some pluses at a lot of places, but there's some big holes. You bring up offensive line. They need offensive tackles. That's no secret. Uh, but you're mm -hmm. beholden to what the portal is going to give you. And, and right now there hasn't really been – uh, a ton of opportunities, but you talk about expectation, Brian, and, and look, uh, we all know that, that some people's expectations always uh -huh. going to be a uh, national championship or bust. Mm -hmm. And look, that's, that, there's a lot of merit to that. that that's good to want to strive for that and things like that. But looking at the schedule, you bring it up the first two games, uh, step into the bakery, get you a couple cupcakes, but uh, mm -hmm. that, you know, the, you can never overlook them. And then you go to happy Valley looking at that game. Uh, is that a statement game for Brian Harson in his first year at Auburn, uh, even though Penn State last year uh, struggled to win an inter-squad scrimmage? I think it's absolutely a statement game. I think it's a statement game for the program and for uh, Harson altogether. I mean, and it's mostly a statement game for Bo Nix because of, uh, of his road woes the last two years. You know, I think he's thrown maybe one interception at home to 11 interceptions on the road and, you know, kind of struggled uh, away from Jordan Hare and, you know, going into, you know, over 100,000 people and having a whiteout, which they might do this whiteout, who knows, but a full capacity uh, Beaver Stadium. Yeah, it's definitely a statement wow. game. Uh, uh, it's going to be a hard road game, but I think Auburn can actually win the, that one. And if they win that one, you know, we'll see. We'll see <laughs> yeah, mo momentum's a real thing. You play that one, then you go to LSU. Uh, then you get the first really rivalry showdown of Brian Harson's Auburn career. Uh, when Georgia comes uh, to the Plains, which which that should be interesting, even though you look up front, it's a little bit different than uh, what Georgia has and what Auburn has. But uh, that's why they play the game. And uh, Brian, speaking of Bo Nix, you know, this has been something that uh, a lot of people are, are in one camp or another. I'm in the camp of two things can be true at the same time. Bo Nix can need to improve in the pocket and, and stop throwing mm -hmm. off platform. Uh, and the offensive line has to get better. You know, and they got to yep. protect him. But uh, when you look at this offense with Brian Harson and his experience pl calling plays and working with quarterbacks, Mike Bobo and his experience calling plays mm -hmm. and working with quarterbacks, do you think this is the perfect combination, you know, for Bo Nix? Because you're going to have people out there that, oh, he's he's a dark horse for the Heisman and, and all this other. Where, where do you kind of see Bo Nix uh, in this offense? And, and how long of a leash does he have, do you think? I think he'll. He, I, I think it'll be a short leash with the arrival of T.J. Finley. Mm. I think uh, that kind of, that kind of. I think it should have woken up uh, Bo Nix into the fact that hey, I finally have competition for the first time in two years, and you know, if I struggle like I did against South Carolina with the three interceptions on the road, I might be taken out finally. I mean, there was no, there was no way they were going to put in Cord Sandberg or Grant Lloyd or somebody like that no. uh, for Bo Nix last year, and. Uh, with family arrival, uh, you know, a short leash, but I think Nick's will improve. I mean, if he stays mediocre like he has been, uh, family will win the job. I mean, there's no there's no way to uh, uh, around it. I mean, uh, we'll see on uh, September 4th, I guess. But, you know, I think teams will be smart and it will load the box against the run and it'll make Nick's beat them. I mean, the wide receivers are unproven. Yeah. Mostly. And, um, uh, Knicks as a as a whole has you know struggled, and they're they're gonna make him beat him with his arm, and uh, we'll see if that if that comes to fruition or if uh, you know Knicks uh, struggles again. Yeah, I, I'll be interested to see uh, his decision making later in the play. I think you'll see more check down throws, uh, things of that nature, and and TJ Finley does apply pressure. Uh, I'll be interested to see uh, how many reps that he gets in that first game, assuming Auburn's going to be ahead uh, by a decent amount when he comes in, how much of the playbook he's able to absorb uh, in a short period of time, the summer and the fall. But again, when you've been through it and you understand kind of what goes into it, you have a better chance of being prepared for it. Uh, but, you know, Brian, looking at this Auburn, you know, offense, you bring up the wide receivers. Uh, there's been some talk, the Demetrius Robertson kid, 
uh, Balin mm-hmm. from another SEC school that Auburn's going to take a look at him. Uh, who in that room right now do you look to to really step up? Because they are unproven. Elijah Canyon's got a, is a guy that has the body type and ability to do it. We know what Kobe Hudson can do when he gets the ball in his hand uh, mm-hmm. at the slot. Uh, you kind of go down the list. Xavier Capers, the guy that was banged up last year. Is there one guy you've really got your eye on that you think uh, may live up to that role if they don't go to the portal and get another one? I think it has to be Shredder Jackson. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've been waiting for him to break out for now. Yeah. It seems two or three years, and it just hasn't happened. You know, if that's the offense, if it's, you know, just him – or his potential or his talent. And you, you never know, but I would expect him to have a, a bigger role in the offense. And, you know, with so many unproven guys, these guys are going to have their chances to win a job. And I, I would expect Cedric Jackson to step up and maybe, you know, be productive this year and uh, have a bigger role in the offense. Yeah. And, uh, you know, speaking about pass catchers, first play of the spring game, uh, I was shocked just to see it, not that it was called. Auburn gets under center, runs a play action, and throws a design ball to the tight end that's not Brendan Frazier out uh, soloed up, catching a fade out in the end zone or some backwards-ass type play where they you know pitch it three times and throw it to a tight end. Oh, but, yeah, uh, you know, seeing Auburn utilize the tight end, I think that's going to help Bo Nix. Mm-hmm. It, it helps the way you're able to attack defenses. It opens up the middle of the field. It create, creates matchup problems. Do you see Auburn leaning on the tight ends more early because they don't have a proven playmaker on the outside? They should because they have a plethora. I mean, how many tight ends do they have on the roster? They have six, seven, and four or five of those are pretty damn good. And, you know, they should be able to uh, give Knicks a safety valve uh, and spread the field a little bit more and, you know, kind of play the Lawson Kirk and roll or Uzama. And, you know, those Uzama didn't get the ball as much as maybe Lawson Kirk, but, you know, give him an eight yard out route or something like that and give him a safety valve that he's never had really in the Malzahn offense. And, you know, if they have that, that would be uh, very, very, you know, beneficial for this offense. Yeah, I mean, the more weapons you have, the more areas they have to defend. Uh, and speaking about weapons, if you're looking for a, a weapon of some sort to get your kid noticed, your daughter, your son, or you're a guardian, or, or you're a prospect, you need to download the Dynasty U app right now. It's in the Google Play Store, anywhere you get your apps. It's like LinkedIn for recruits. It's awesome. It's concise. The college coaches love it because they can just flip through and see everything they need to see. It's a whole heck of a lot better than email. Again, any info you want to put in there, there's a place to put it. It's concise. As I mentioned, it's easy to navigate. It's Dynasty U. It's an app. It's in the Google Play Store. Anywhere you get it and get it while it's free because I promise you, uh, as popular as it is, it's not going to be free for long. Uh, Shout out to Ziri and the boys over there. Dynasty U, uh, one of the best apps out if you're looking to get your kid or yourself recruited, like the LinkedIn for recruits. Download that today. We're here with the managing editor of the Auburn Wire, a member of USA Today and the FWAA, Mr. Brian Stoltz. Uh, talk a little Auburn offense in, in the first half. You know, looking looking on the the other side, and I want to kind of talk about you know the rest of the SEC here, Brian. When you look at the West, uh, we all know what Alabama has. We all know what they bring in, and and even though they lose guys, they return them. It's it's like being it's like regenerating. It's like the it's immortals. Like yeah, it's like the immortals. Um, but when you look at them this year. Do you see any vulnerabilities in the schedule? Do you see them losing an SEC game? Uh, I think it'd be, you know, uh, almost malpractice not to pick them to win the West, but do you see them losing uh, a conference game uh, before the championship game? I can see them losing in their matchup at Florida. Mm, uh, early, early. An early matchup. Uh, Bryce Young, first time on the road. Um, the Swamp will be... 90,000 or however, and it'll be hot and humid and not that it is an in Tuscaloosa, but <laughs> when you get down in Florida, there's a whole different kind of humid, uh, especially in September. That and, swamp heat, that swamp heat's yeah. different. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And, uh, you know, that can provide, uh, some jitters for a first time, first year quarterback, uh, playing in the swamp on, you know, his first true road game, I would say, since they play mm-hmm. Miami in Atlanta, I think, or somewhere, but, uh, first two road game in the swamp. Yeah, it's going to be uh, pretty tough for uh, any quarterback. Yeah, I'm interested to see that spread, uh, what that looks. And, you know, you look at Florida defensively last year was a disaster. If, if you can find me a D.C. with more pressure on him than Todd Grantham mm-hmm. entering this season, I feel like uh, you'd have to drop a piano on somebody. Uh, but, you know, you, you look at the rest of the West, you look at the two Mississippi schools, uh, Mike mm-hmm. Leach, Lane Kiffin, 
Ole Miss, and I know defensively last year they were they were an open door, uh, but they've they've added some guys to the roster. S- still don't have mm-hmm. the personnel they need on defense. But I mean, you look at Matt Corral, Braylon Sanders coming back, Kenny Yaboa. Uh, mm-hmm. They they did let their offensive line coach go uh, for a lot of different reasons than LSU did, but uh, you hate to see that. But you know, is Ole Miss a player to you in the West to be sneaky and and win a few games? They shouldn't. I think they should. I think they will. Yeah. I think uh, that offense is good enough to put enough points to overcome the defensive liabilities that the Rebels have right now. I mean, Kiffin is a, I mean, he's a mastermind when it comes to offense. And, you know, any kid that plays offense would love to play for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's one of the biggest uh, recruiting advantages that I think Kiffin has right now is he's going to have fun and they're going to throw the ball and they're going to, you know, do anything to put up points and they're going to have fun doing it. And, uh, yeah, I think they'll win a couple of games they're not supposed to, but from competing for the West, I just don't see them beating Alabama or maybe beating Texas A&M right now. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. You got to stop somebody eventually, or you you got to get turnovers. If you don't turn the ball over against Ole Miss in that defense, you're always going to have a chance because they're still so limited from a personnel standpoint. Uh, then you know you look at LSU and A&M. Let's put LSU, A&M, and Auburn all in the same group right here. Out of mm-hmm. the three. Uh, looking at, at the schedules, kind of understanding who plays who, when, and where. And again, it's so early. Uh, who do you think out of that, those three finished second in the West, Brian? We'll put you on the spot, right? I now. think I think it'll be I think it'll be Texas A and M again. Mm-hmm. I think Jimbo Fisher has built something solid in College Station, and you know they do have to replace Kellen Mond after seemingly nine years there, which yeah. I don't know, I don't know how long he was there, but it felt like forever. But uh, I think with Isaiah Spiller, I think he's the best running back in the SEC. Sorry, I can't get to you, but I think Spiller is. Ooh, we're going to break some uh, news there. Break some news there. Yeah, uh, that's my, just my opinion. But, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, their defense and uh, Jimbo Fisher is a head coach. I think they're going to outlast LSU and uh, Auburn. And as far as LSU, you know, it's amazing what Orgeron can do with 14 draft picks and – two of the best assistants in the uh, nation and then what he does without them. <laughs> and uh, uh, we'll see if he, that was just a one-year fluke. Uh, maybe like the Chizik with Cam Newton and Joe Burrow playing that role. But um, <laughs> I, I just uh, don't see if uh, uh, LSU being that – I don't see them bouncing back to being a contender again uh, this year. Yeah. Uh, I just I think there's too many uh, holes there. I think Orgeron is, you know – as good as a motivator and as good as uh, maybe a recruiter he is, I just don't think he is the X's and O's coach that he needs to be. And, you know, he lost his two best and it showed with, uh, but, you know, maybe they, maybe they rebelled on talent and they have guys that, I mean, LSU is always going to have talent. I mean, they can keep everyone in the state of Louisiana. They'll have the best recruiting class in the nation probably. But, um, you know, I just, I, I don't think they're rebelling this year to the point of, contending for the SEC West. Yeah, and if not, and if they don't, you know, Ed O's, that, that seat uh, is going to be pretty hot. Uh, yes. You know, he's a guy, and, and it's funny, Brian, going in this year, you know, I said this is the first year going in where there's really not an SEC head coach on the hot seat, but if you had to put mm-hmm. one there by default, Ed mm-hmm. O needs to have a pretty good year, uh, and they need to start off well early. And, Brian, before I let you go, uh, looking at the East, you know, you, mm-hmm. you look at Georgia. Mm-hmm. My pick to win the national championship uh, okay. That's going to make some people feel a type of way. <laughs> others feel a different type of way. Uh, but when you do look at the East, do you have Georgia winning the East? And who do you have finishing behind them? I think Florida takes a step back. What Mark Stoops and Eli Drinkowitz are doing at Kentucky and Missouri, especially Mark Stoops right now, he's mm-hmm. a lot further along in that journey than Eli is over there in uh, Columbia. But uh, I think there's some good storylines in the East. I-, I know Georgia's looking to dominate, but I think there's some interesting stuff going on here. Yeah, I think Georgia will run away with the East. I think there's just too much talent for them to blow it. Um, and uh, Kirby Smart just has so much talent and coaching on his side that, you know, they should run away. And they they might not win a game by less than single, single digits against the SEC East this year. Um, I think Kentucky's their biggest uh, problem uh, going into – I don't think uh, you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong, Brian. I think uh, Kentucky's schedule fits up very favorably for them uh their non-conference schedule forget that but they don't they miss uh alabama they miss auburn they miss lsu i think i think their permanent opponent is mississippi state which leach is still working with that building the you know, boat building the boat yeah, building yeah building the ship pirate building ship. the ship you're right not yeah. a not a boat yeah. it's a ship <laughs> 
But um, yeah, I think they uh, set up favorably for them, and um, they they have one of the top three running backs in the nation or in the SEC with Chris Rodriguez. Yeah, and yeah. Um, you know they have a pretty good offensive line returning, not as good as last year, and their defense might be better than it was last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mark Stoops has something going there. Um, and, you know, if they could win, I mean, if they could beat Georgia and, you know, they could, they could take down Florida. If um, Ken Brian, if Kentucky's the team that takes down Georgia and ruins their national championship hopes, there may be, it may look like Sherman's March coming through Atlanta again <laughs> the week after that, man. It might, it might. Uh, it, it would be quite funny. I mean, I grew up in the Bluegrass State and the um, rest of my family is Kentucky, but, um, I'd be happy for them. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I see them uh, finishing second in the SEC East uh, and Florida third. I yeah. just uh, – I think Florida, you know, will take a step back. And you mentioned Todd Branham, and Florida knows what they're going to do with him and that defense. And, you know, they don't have Kyle Pitts or Kyle Trask anymore. And um, I think Kentucky's set up for a good run. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a heck of a season week two. Kentucky and Missouri uh, won the first SEC mm -hmm. games. Buckle up. Never thought you'd say that for Kentucky, and Missouri, outside of, uh, you know, either a basketball game or, or a history lesson. I don't know. But, uh, Brian, I really appreciate it, buddy. Great stuff. Cool. Tell everybody where they can find you uh, on social media, and I'm sure we'll do this again. Yeah, you can find me at uh, auburnwire.usatoday.com. Uh, we're part of, you know, 17 or 18 uh, wire sites for different colleges. We have Alabama. We have LSU. We have Tennessee, um, Georgia, and Florida, and uh I think, I think that's it for the SEC, but uh, we have good coverage every day. Uh, you know, we're focusing on recruiting right now, but uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Brian J. Stoltz, B-R-I-A-N-J-S-T-U-L-T-Z. Nice, man. Well, Brian, I appreciate it, buddy. We'll do this again and stay safe out there. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate you guys as well. Go to thejboyshow.com. Grab some gear, hoodies, anything you want. Great price. Uh, and thin, too. You can wear them during the summer. They're not too thick. I did that on purpose. Also, subscribe on Instagram, Twitter, social media. We're on Facebook as well. It's The J Boy Show. You can donate as well on PayPal uh, at The J Boy Show or Venmo, Jacob-Crane-13. We appreciate your support. It's been another edition of The J Boy Show, and we are going, going, gone. The J Boy Show is produced by David Cohn, Technical Director Dave Hammock, Creative Director David Culbertson, Audio Engineer Faison Sharif, Production Assistants Blaine Crane and Kyle Orr, Executive Producers Jake Crane, Vince Thompson, Steve Chamberlain, and David Cohn. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, thejboyshow.com, for updates regarding our newest apparel and merch designs. Win the water cooler with The J Boy Show.